Wow, it's been so long. <laughs> yeah. It's. <laughs> I wonder. Wait, let, 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 it's let me. It's been ten let me, days. Has it really been ten days? It's well. Right now it's October fifth. It's been like two weeks, basically. It's been two weeks <laughs> since we last played this game. Yeah, I mean for a good reason a little bit. We've both been we both been a little sick, but uh, welcome back everyone to another episode of Phoenix Wright, yeah. Ace Attorney. Um, I'm I'm she's Phoenix and I'm White, so Phoenix White. You mean Wright? Anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, that was my bad attempt at a at a joke, but yeah. let's continue on. We we are now in the investigation on the third day. Yeah, the final investigation. Yeah, hopefully. Yep. But well, we kind of have to. The next the next time we load up, it's going to be like trial. So. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wright. I'm I'm sorry for what my sister said. Yeah, she better fucking be. <clears throat> drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to do in order to get him the verdict he deserved. Even if it meant forging the evidence. <laughs> That's crazy. I, I didn't know. I never knew that the SL9 incident was just another name for the Joe Dark killings. Sounds like everyone heard about these killings but me. The Phoenix was in law school by that time. Yeah, he's like... He's like, he's like, oh shit, I gotta study for the bar exam. Meanwhile, people are just like dying. Getting murdered back and forth. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's like, oh, this is this exam is causing me to stay up all night. Yeah. Uh, I must be the most miserable person in the world. And meanwhile, meanwhile someone's getting, getting stabbed. Yeah, someone's getting fucking stabbed in the, in, in an alleyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the unluckiest person, me, right now. <laughs> yeah, having to having to be in in my law school dorm right now. Yeah. Lana wanted Dark convicted so badly. That's why she used me. That's why she used what happened to me. What do you mean what happened to you? It's all there in the file. Joe Dark's last victim was Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Were they hanging out? When he murdered Officer Marshall's brother, he left behind an incriminating piece of evidence. But what did you have to do with the killings, Emma? I killed him. <laughs> It was me the whole time! On the night Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered, Joe Dark tried to kill me. Oopsie. What? He tried to kill you? Officer Marshall's brother, Neil, was only trying to save me. Oopsies. So that means you. Yeah. I was a witness in the Joe Dark trial. I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Me slapper. <laughs> um, things just perked up around here. <laughs> uh, here, would you would you like the knife that was used in the almost, Joe Dark killing? Yeah, to almost kill you. There you go. Why would have this been in the car's exhaust pipe? Oh, it's actually unique dialogue. I didn't I didn't think that it would actually be. <laughs> I thought she would just be like, I'm too depressed to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she, she perked up real quick. Yeah. It's evidence from an old case, right? Right, the ESO9 incident. It was solved, apparently. Why do they keep saying Phoenix's last name? It's kind of, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. You're not the first to want to make that joke. This knife was stolen on the day of the evidence transferal. Maybe I should look into this ESO9 incident. Wait, did you make the point that like she she's looking at everything through rose-colored glasses? Yeah, I think so. I think I think you were the one that made that point because like I was I was just thinking about that again. Uh, anyways. Also, that would make sense battle. when she's doing, like, the <laughs> <laughs> That makes sense when she's doing the spray. Then why not? It changes it to red, so maybe she just already has it like that, so she can spray and see blood and fingerprints. Yeah. <laughs> she got real depressed real quick. Yeah. It happened two years ago. It was right about this time of the year, too. Sorry if I voice crack. I'm still getting over the sickness, so, like, my voicing for her is very bad right now. Dude, I think, like, at the height of my sickness, I was like, let me see if I can do voices, because I really do want to get some recordings done, and I was, I tried doing Peach, and immediately my went into, like, a hacking fit, because <laughs> yeah. it was, like, so high pitch. Yeah. I was, like, dying in the car. I'm like, okay, so I can't do Peach's voice. Awesome. <laughs> there was a terrible thunderstorm that day, unusual for the season. I was alone in my sister's office. 
We were planning to eat dinner together once she finished her work. Wow, doesn't that sound familiar? <laughs> and suddenly, this terrifying man came bursting into the office. Joe Dark. It seemed like he was running from someone. He pulled out a knife and screamed at me. I didn't know what was going on. Just then, Prosecutor Marshall showed up. Jake Marshall's brother. Joe Dark tried to take me hostage. But before he could, Mr. Marshall tackled him. Fucking football player style. That shit was crazy, yo. <laughs> that shit was crazy, yo. <laughs> suck my dick, yo. <laughs> yo, suck my dick, yo. Hey, baby. <laughs> then. What happened? I'm, I'll fucking explain it. Shut up, Phoenix. <laughs> Stop interrupting the story! I would've been done with this 40 seconds ago! <laughs> I'll, I'll never forget it. Lightning struck and the lights went out. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning flashed outside the window, lighting up the office for an instant. What I saw then burned a permanent picture in my mind. I I can still see it now. And every time she closes her eyes, it's like, <laughs> A permanent picture? What is this permanent picture? Uh, after the battle! <laughs> I don't remember the moment when Dark stabbed Mr. Marshall, even though I have a permanent picture of it in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> so you weren't able to testify about that? No. I was only asked about when I was attacked. That must be why Lana, why she made up the crime. <gasps> made it up? You mean provided bogus evidence? The prosecutor's office wanted that guilty verdict so badly. Lana forced the evidence and Mr. Edgeworth used it. Edgeworth? My boyfriend? <laughs> yes, well, I'm sure you didn't know anything about him. He couldn't have known he was given false evidence. Even so, that's when it all started. Oh. The rumors about Mr. Edgeworth, I mean. It's all my fault. Well, it's not your fault. If I could have just testified properly, none of this would have happened. So it's true. Even though he may have not known it, Edgeworth really was involved in falsifying evidence. After that case ended, Lana was never the same. She became cold, like she is today. She, she's cold-blooded now, she's a reptile! She became cold, I, I keep offering her a jacket, but she won't take it. <laughs> <laughs> she must not have been able to face up for what she did, especially not to Emma. Hey, what's this permanent picture of uh, Marshall getting stabbed that you remember? What did you see in the instant that, that the crime occurred? Dark knocked down Mr. Marshall and raised his knife. You know, Marshall was stabbed right in the front of his poor girl. Oh, in front of the- God damn it! I don't remember what happened after that. Apparently, I passed out. When I came to, Lana was cradling me in her arms. Poor Emma. You've been through so much. Why is there no one in this courtroom? I, I couldn't bring myself to testify about that instant. I couldn't think about that day again! I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. I drew a picture, but it wasn't any good. <laughs> Can I see it? <laughs> Two years ago, you must have been 14. That's understandable. It's understandable why you sucked at drawing, Emma. <laughs> I, I understand. It's like a fucking art class. <laughs> Once it was all over, I made up my mind. I decided that when I grew up, I'd become a scientific investigator. I want to be able to fight crime with my testimonies. Ah, oh, that's nice. What? That's what? Uh, what? What's her name in SVU? Walt Warner. Yeah. Yeah, that's what she does. Well, she's a she's an ME, a medical examiner. Yeah. Well, she still goes up and testifies about her findings to the, like the the grand jury and also in court. Yeah, I think she would be closer to like CSU. Okay. Like the crime scenes unit. Okay. That, yeah. Like, that, like cleans. Like up that actually groups. does like murders or. Yeah, and they and they like find. Uh, they're the ones that like will say like, oh yeah, this is the evidence to the detective. Yeah. And then the detective will be able to like make all the connections and whatnot. Yeah. And find the evidence to make an airtight case. That way, Lana would never have to forge any. Oh damn! I see. I think I finally started to understand what makes Emma tick. But there's still something that bothers me about that crime. All right, before we continue on with this, yeah, I want your opinion and uh, and some of the audience's opinion too, if they if they want to answer it too. Yeah. Do you Turkish. think <laughs> if if it is like 100% conclusive that someone is like a murderer that they're like guilty of a crime or anything, 
Do you think that it is morally justifiable to forge evidence in order to stop them from committing crimes any further? I think if they are a real criminal, then there should be evidence for it. You shouldn't have to make evidence up. See, so, so then think, that could like open the door. You can just do that to anyone. You're like, yeah, I know they're guilty of this crime, so I'm gonna forge evidence and make sure of it. Yeah, well, yeah, I I understand that, but I'm I'm just I'm just suggesting like, for for the case where it's like a hundred percent guaranteed that this person did this crime, but you don't have a hundred percent conclusive evidence for it, like, cause she she could clearly see like what happened and know that this, that Joe Dark was an actual killer. Yeah. And whatnot. Do you think that? it's appropriate in this case for the evidence to have been forged or do you think it's still like I still scummy? think no yeah yeah I, I'm I'm kind of on the same page with you because I mean l like you said it, it opens up a whole and like they go they go like about this in like crime shows where it's like you open up a can of worms in, in mm -hmm. this case you allow the this door to be open for anyone to make evidence for anything. Yeah, I think they say that a lot as for you. Like, oh, if we let this fly, who knows how many pedophiles are going to do this, like, exact same maneuver. Yeah, so, like, the defense and the prosecutors will have, like, more ammunition for potentially getting, like, because the whole thing with the crime, the crime system is you're innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. But this automatically stacks, like, the, the deck against you. Yeah. It's almost like you're playing against the house in poker. Yeah. Like, the house always has an advantage. Yeah. So... It's it's kind of it's kind of scuffed in that regard, but yeah, I was I was just wondering your thoughts on it. I mean, I'm I'm pretty much on the same page as yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Like I think, I don't think it's necessarily like scummy, but I don't think it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Because like, I don't want to say it's a like really horrible thing because they stopped this guy from killing people. Like yeah. He he could have been he could have murdered more people yeah. after after this if she didn't for, uh, forge any evidence. But at the same time, like you said, there had to have been another way. Mm -hmm. Like, no one, no one leaves behind zero evidence. Ask a child if he or she is choking. Are you choking? Are you choking? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think that's a yes. I think he's okay. <laughs> yeah, she, she was continuously choking. Yeah. That's what you get for eating chips in the middle of this. Yeah. Fu yeah. Don't yeah. eat. <laughs> Yeah, don't, <laughs> lesson of advice to all you kids out there, don't eat. Yeah. Uh, anyways, continue on, Emma. That something puzzling. There's something that's puzzling me, Emma. What is it? You said that you were Lana, in Lana's office at the time, right? That's right. Why then would a serial killer come running in there? Not only that, but he was being chased by a prosecutor. Oh, there's no mystery there. Joe Dark had been taking him for questioning that day. Where the fuck did he get the knife from then? I don't know. He just had it. Like, you know how, like, those pens? They just changed to, like, a knife. <laughs> yeah, switchblade. Taking him for questioning me by police? Of course. This happened at the police department. Oh, it did? He tried to run away halfway through the interview and fled into my sister's office. But why did he run all the way over to your sister's office? Because the detective offices in the questioning room were right across from the elevator. <laughs> Across from the elevator? But Lana was the chief prosecutor, wasn't she? No, silly, didn't I tell you? No. Two years ago, Lana was a detective. Oh, cool. She was the best in the entire force. What? That's news to me. After the Joe Dark case, she was transferred to the prosecutor's office and made chief prosecutor. Nice. Lana used to be a detective. I better have another talk with her. She used to be gumshoe, except she didn't get her fucking pay cut every fucking time. What do you think about this unstable jar? This jar's pretty fragile. It looks like it's about to break apart. What do you mean about to? It already broken. I meant again. This piece we this piece was found in Detective Goodman's evidence locker. That means this is somehow related to that other incident. I yep. think she'd actually have unique dialogue about that one. That's After the battle, masterless cattle. Mia's plant Charlie. I've been taking care of him in Maya's absence. Huh? He looks a little yellow today. Oh, I watered him just now. I mixed in a lot too. Mixed in what? 
Why well, my very own scientific editor? Well, Charlie, do you like it? <laughs> I'm, I'm dying. I told you he's turning yellow. <laughs> yeah, the next time we see Charlie in the next game, he's just wilted. <laughs> All right, will Lana talk to us? Is, is does that mean Meekin's free to go? <laughs> do you do? He's there. <laughs> oh. oh, Lana. Mr. Wright, it seems I keep causing you trouble. Falsifying evidence? I don't think you were that type. Criminals don't don't mind playing fool. Why should we? That uh, foul? Yes. Fuck. <laughs> but Lana, if you're wrong, an innocent person might be found guilty. Believe me, I understand the risk. Lana. Emma told me about you. Oh? About how you used to be a detective two years ago. And how the SL9 incident was the reason of your transfer to the prosecutor's office. That's right. Could you fill me in on the details, especially about the unknown change of job? Yeah, don't you need a fucking law degree? <laughs> I suppose you have the right to know, Mr. Wright. I <laughs> have the right to know, Mr. Wright. <laughs> a lot of revelations were uncovered in the trial today. Not. Not the least of which was the fact that this case is largely connected to another one two years ago. Evidence from that case was stolen as well. No, I can't. Although I expected as much. Yeah, it was Joe Dark's ghost. <laughs> Ooh, spooky. I've come to haunt your asses. <laughs> I know how obsessive Officer Marshall can be. That trial, it really wasn't fair, was it? I believed in you, Lana, and you let me down, you fucking bitch! <laughs> you lied to me! You didn't do it! I believe that no matter what happened, you'd always stick to the truth. Know what this is giving? Like, like on My Hero Academia, like, remember! Remember her! <laughs> I don't know what you're referring to. Alright. <laughs> I've seen the show and I still don't know. I don't know, it feels like some kind of, like, climactic, like, you're, like, you're going up against, like, your quote-unquote friend, and you're like, please believe! Remember our past together! You're not like this! <laughs> Just hearing that makes me realize how cringe like the start of that show is. Damn. <laughs> it can't be helped, Emma. That trial two years ago, I sold my soul. She sold her soul to the devil. Yeah, for designer. <laughs> well, all dramatic aside, the fact of the matter is, at 5.15 there was no murder at the police department. Tell me it's not true, Lana. What the witness Miss Star said about you stabbing Mr. Goodman with a knife. Oopsies. <laughs> Lana, I don't understand. Me. I don't either. understand a lot of things. Yeah. And this <laughs> is one of them. Yeah, especially this. I don't understand it at all. <laughs> Why won't you tell us, Emma? This doesn't involve. This doesn't involve just me. I don't think I've ever seen Lana look so phased before. It's true. I was a member of the police force two years ago. She was amazing. Oh, there she is. All cool and shit. They still talk about all the cases she and Chief Gaunt cracked together. Is it just me or has he got big ass tits? Sorry. <laughs> Chief Gaunt? He was the deputy chief of police back then, but he still worked on crime scenes. Damn again. He was everything I inspired to be. Hot, sexy, and big and, 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 and a man. Yeah. Oh, me too, bitch. Me too. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I want to be hot, sexy, and a man. Yep. Bring it here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> they were the best team ever. They solved crimes before the reports could even be filed. Damn. I'm a really idolized her big sister. That reminds me of uh, something I was doing for work. They, they like reported this bug. And by the time I saw the ticket, I fixed it. Damn. Damn, you, you're just like Lana. Are you going to start forging code now? Yeah, I'm going to start forging code and, yeah. and, 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 make, and making up bugs. And yeah. So now you're the chief prosecutor. What happened? I always planned on becoming a prosecutor. The reason I became a detective was... To gain some clout! <laughs> you should wanted that Rolex! <laughs> Experience investigating crime scenes, so you can use that experience in court, right? 
Gant's help in the SL9 case was critical to the resolution. After that, he became chief of police and arranged my transfer to the prosecutor's office. Maybe I should ask more about this investigation of theirs two years ago. Hey, can you tell me about the investigation two years ago? <laughs> two years ago, I was second in command of the detectives investigating Dark. Second in command? That means the investigation lead was Damon Gant, right? Yes. Deputy Chief Gant and I shared the same office, the same investigations. Oh, it's like a cool partner, like like how Elliot and Olivia were, like an SVU and whatnot. Yeah, lovers. Lo yeah, lovers. <laughs> <laughs> I miss them so much. <laughs> they even had the same office. <gasps> the same office. <laughs> oh, and they were roommates. Oh my god, they were roommates. <laughs> we led a team of the best detectives on the force. And Gumshoe was not on that list. That's <laughs> <laughs> a good men whose case it was Jake Marshall and Angel Starr. It was the first time Marshall worked with his brother. He was quite gun ho Without a doubt, John Dark was oh sorry, Joe Dark was the serial killer. Who the fuck's John? <laughs> yeah, his, his, his brother he got framed for it all. <laughs> we, <laughs> we asked him to come in for questioning. We were desperate for evidence. It was when his final murder took place. When he tried to murder Emma. Prosecutor Marshall was trying to save me from Dark. You see, the first person who happened upon the crime scene was me. <gasps> now you tell us! <laughs> first one at scene. Can you tell us what happened after the battle? <laughs> Damon Gant and Neil Marshall were the ones questioning Dark that day. The investigation was in its final stages, and Dark must have suddenly panicked. So, he waited until Gans and Marshall let their guards down and fled the room. From there, he ran straight to the office shared by Deputy Chief Gant and myself. That's where he found me. So, you're the first person to run into the scene, Lana? It appears so. I was filling some paperwork while Gant and Marshall were questioning Dark. Me. What a perfect timing for that to show up <laughs> <in his laughs> <day later. laughs> when, I when I returned to my office, I saw three bodies on the floor and, this and smelled blood. Three bodies? Prosecutor, Marsh Prosecutor Marshall, the victim, Emma, and who had passed out. And the suspect, Joe Dark. During the struggle, it seems Mr. Marshall struck his final blow before he died. Joe Dark had inquired a minor concussion and lay unconscious. What did you do? To be honest, I panicked. She talked to the crime scene all over, got her fingerprints everywhere. <laughs> I picked up Emma, carrying her outside the room, and just held her. Can't blame her, after all. Her sister must have, have gone through. After that, I placed Dark under immediate arrest. Let me get this straight. You were, you were all involved in SO9 incident. That's right. Quite a coincidence. Hmm. I don't buy it. W what are you saying? There's no way everyone involved in this trial was also involved in that incident, just by chance. That case was solved two years ago. At least one person went to extremes because they didn't believe it was truly solved. Officer Marshall, yes, his actions came to a surprise to me as well. Ever since his brother died, he changed completely. I guess he wasn't convinced with the ruling against Joe Dark. Life doesn't end with the closing of a case. Everyone has a life, has to live the rest of their lives with the memories. That case just, just might not be over yet. Emma was assaulted by by Dark at the police station, right? Yes, in the office that Damon Gant and I shared. The office that Mr. Gant now occupies by himself, the Chief's office. Maybe we should have a look at the Chief's office, the site of the final SL9 murder. After the battle! <laughs> Present! My Ms. jar! Attorneys and prosecutors are no- oh. 
Don't care. Didn't Good ask. Mask. You're white. Do you go criminal affairs? You're parking not. <laughs> I know the parking lot. Is, is she? No one's here today. Not even Miss Star. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. I hate it when. <laughs> Everyone's probably busy looking into what exactly went down in the evidence room. Yeah. That must be where the detectives are. We proved in court today that on the day of the crime, no one was murdered in the evidence room at 5.15 p.m. Yeah, I thought we were finally making some headway in our case. Well, no one was murdered at that time, but what if earlier? <laughs> but instead, it looks like we just ended up making Lana look even more guilty. Hang in there, Lana. <laughs> Cat poster on the wall. Hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta find all the answers by tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Go to go to detention center. Yeah, hi, yeah. Lana. Go to criminal affairs. Uh, hi, hi, bald man. Wait, is this office here or is that? I think it's the other one. I don't know. It seems it's to gum shoes nowhere. Things seem quite kind of quiet around here today. You're right. Dream detective seems. Seems the same though. Why don't we go look for some other people to talk to? Alright. We can come back here later. Uh, it's the police. There department. we go. You think he's still outside doing the dance? <laughs> so so what what is the difference between the police department here versus the criminal affairs department? I don't know. What's the difference with how did you get let out? <laughs> Howdy, Bambina. Oh, Mr. Marshall. What? I never thought things turn out this way when I woke up this morning. Okay, sad or sad. You never know where life will lead you, eh, Bambina? I should have known my luck had run out when old Billy dried it this morning. <laughs> Billy? Oh, fuck it. That must be his pet cactus. <laughs> Say, where are you heading? Just over the prosecutor's office for a little interrogation. It's a voluntary appearance. Well, we all know I won't be coming back. Sorry, but you can't go in the evidence room today, partner. Fuck! But, Mr. Marshall, why'd you do it? Why do prospectors head west? If ever there was a case I needed to know the truth about, it was the hit one. Before you turn yourself in, Mr. Marshall, would you mind telling us exactly what happened? Hmm. Looks like I won't be getting a steak lunch today. Haha, <laughs> loser. Something was fishy about that trial from the beginning. It wasn't just me either. All the detectives thought so. What do you mean, fishy? Some of the facts reported were inconsistent with the evidence we found. For example, the murder weapon. The murder weapon? You mean this switchblade knife with the broken tip? That was Joe Dark's, all right. But in the initial autopsy report, a question was raised. A question? The blade of the knife was not a perfect match with the wound the victim sustained. Oh, what does that mean? It means there's a good chance that knife was not the murder weapon. Oh. However, in the report that was finally submitted, that possibility had been erased. Could the facts have been concealed with forging evidence? That case left behind scars on all of us. The scars that the SL9 incident left behind? I got the looks, but he got the brains. He was one of the best prosecutors around. I had just made detective when it went down. It was our first case together. Damn, and they're last. <laughs> How old was he, your brother? He was 27 at the time. Hey, look good for 27. He was awarded the highest honor that very day. The highest honor? You mean the, um... King of Prosecutors. I knew it. What are you looking at me like that for? That's an honor for a prosecutor. Mr. Marshall must have really been close to his brother. The day the SL9 incident took place, that wasn't the same day as... That's right. It was the day of the evidence transfer. Fuck. Interesting. It was drizzling that morning. By nightfall, there was thunder. I can't believe two years have gone by already. Same. I tried to steal the evidence so the case wouldn't die. Apparently, someone tried to stop you. Tete Goodman was murdered, and the evidence locker was empty. There was something going on behind the scenes in that case. We all knew that later. 
Every detective involved in that investigation, save one, was taken care of. Miss Starr was fired, and I was demoted and boxed away in a tiny room. What about the dead Goodman? If they did something to him, too, the commissioners would get suspicious. No, they were careful enough not to be too obvious. So they were just like a dick to him? <laughs> they? Who are you talking about? Don't get upset, Bambina. I mean, Dan Gant. I'm on a sky. Oh, my voice just cracked. <laughs> I heard it, I was like, I won't say it. <laughs> I guess I would be suspicious of everyone in the case suddenly got demoted, so... Yeah. The investigation lead, Damon Gant, and his second-in-command, Lana Sky. There wasn't a person on the force who hadn't heard of that duo. That case was the biggest step in both their careers. After the case ended, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office, right? Yeah, Damon Gant, the new chief of police, arranged for that to happen. She's never been the same since she left. Everyone knew her said so. Chief Prosecutor Scott was totally different when she was a detective. Now that he mentions it, I must have said something like that too. Tell me, what happened to my sister? Sorry, Bambina, but her secret is too well guarded. I never found out. Fuck. On a secret. It all started two years ago. So there you have it. That's my story. Did you enjoy it, pardon? No, not really. It was certainly enlightening. There's one thing for sure I found out in court today. That boy Edgeworth isn't my enemy. <laughs> He's my lover. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> He was the one who used falsified evidence to get a guilty verdict. But someone else was the one who gave him that evidence and planned everything. That someone is Damon Gant. Don't believe me? Well, I don't blame you. I won't even be a patrolman after today. Oh, boy. This is... Too bad I won't be around to work with you. When you become a real scientific investigator. Damn. Adios, Bambina. Bye, Marshall. I don't think we ever see him again. He just fades off into... <laughs> fades off to his... Yeah, like you look up into the clouds, he fades in. Like, you did good, kid. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, oh, motherfucker. No! I forgot. <laughs> Let's give him the benefit of doubt. No, 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 no. Don't care. What if that was new shit? <laughs> <laughs> Can I take out his batteries? I just can't help but feel he's going to do something naughty. You know, I'll put him out of his misery. <laughs> Can we not go inside? I guess not. Wait. Yeah. Oh. New shit here. Gum shoe. Gum shoe. Gum shoe. Gum shoe. This place is always pretty empty, but today is deserted. That must mean everyone's busy solving crimes. Yeah, that's good. Oh, if you're looking for the others, uh, they're all in the comments room. Uh, thanks. Wow, he actually talked to us. With the chief prosecutor saying that she did it in this decision about what to do about Mr. Edgeworth, not to mention our statements to the media in tomorrow's trial, there's more chaos going on than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. I think festive is the word used for those. Uh, sir? We'd like to have a look around Chief Kent's office. This is a connecting hallway just from the other building to take an elevator to the top floor. Really? You mean it's okay for us to go in there? I mean, you are police officers here. Emma, don't fucking question it. Hey, you're right, you can't go in there, it's off limits. <laughs> now I see where Detective Gumshoe gets his unique charm. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's <laughs> head to the chief's office. Perfect. <laughs> to the office we go. <laughs> oh, they got the photo up. Yeah. That's nice. Why does this man have a fucking, like, grand piano? Whoa. Like an organ. That's it. <laughs> that reminded me of this old, like, fan art of, like, Alistair from Has No Tell. He's playing, like, one of those, but instead of the, like, how it normally looks, there's, like, Furbies <laughs> there instead. So every time he hits a chord, one of them opens its mouth. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Whoa, where am I? Where am I? Why am I on a ship? 
in the chief's office, silly. At least that's what he said on the door. Okay, we just took a wrong turn. Check out that pipe organ. It's real, isn't it? Um, uh, no. It's not real. Fuck. Phoenix, you're... You're hallucinating. You forgot to take your meds, didn't you? <laughs> you gotta take it. Evan disappears. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. They let people take organ lessons in kindergarten? I guess. I mean, it's just a piano, right? <laughs> I feel like one of those is, like, really fucking expensive. Maybe... Well, listen, her like her sister is a chief of prosecutors now. Her parents are probably rich. Well, I don't, I don't think she was when she was a kid. Because, like, she's, like, what, 16 now? Yeah. That could have been, like, like 10 years ago. They could have gone to private, high, like, private school. I don't know. They used to call me Little Miss Bach. Because I used to botch that fucking thing. <laughs> I thought I was a genius until they tried teaching me notes. <laughs> Poor Emma. <laughs> I never could remember where she was. Hmm? Hi. Oh, it's you two. He has a fucking thing of armor in his. <laughs> yeah, why not? He has a fucking, a fucking organ in here too, and you're surprised like, oh, this fucking piece of armor. Chief Gan. He put that paper he was reading at his desk. So, Rizo, have you been swimming lately? Um, no, I haven't. I've been kind of busy lately. Uh, I can appreciate that. I had my hands full, too, with Mr. Marshall's misconduct and Lana's... Pr what does that say? Provocative. Provocative statement. Provocative statement? Oh, you mean about the forged evidence? Two years ago has passed since that incident. My, how time flies. Why is he so fucking orange? Well, we did end up killing that dude after all. <laughs> we did it indeed. Ha ha ha. See that big picture on the wall over there? No, there's the fucking. <laughs> it's the armor. There's the armor. It's the face. Wait, yeah, it is the face. That's the picture of Lana's Neil and me. So this is Mr. Marshall's brother, Prosecutor Neil Marshall. We took it to collaborate our work together. Something's not right with this picture. Why is there armor over there? <laughs> yeah. I can't quite seem to put my finger on it though. Wait a minute, the shield has a a, a sword through it. Or Zen? Oh, they did say it was broken. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's the music piece. I thought it was a full shield that was broken. Anyway, I like to reminisce all day, but there are matters I need to that are needing my attention. I'm going to lock up here, so let's get out it. Let's get out together. Oh, but this office, it was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? That case has long since been over. There's no need to investigate it anymore. No, uh, don't, especially don't don't look at that uh, armor over there. There is definitely not a body still in it. Don't look at the paper I stuffed in my desk. <laughs> All the same, I, I still think we'll like to take a look around. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said there's no need to investigate it no more. Now hurry up and get out. I have a meeting to attend. Wow, all we gotta do is fucking slap our hands on the organ and then Tony go around! <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we weren't welcome. It seems that case isn't over just yet, after all. What do you mean? Well, he fucking kicked us out! <laughs> Jeff Gant denied a request to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. You mean, like a clue? Like a blues clue? <laughs> she does she have a notebook and everything, she just draws. <laughs> <laughs> There's gotta be a way we can get inside Chief's, Chief's office. Yeah, like a breaking in. Yeah. Or hitting the move button and moving in there. Yeah. <laughs> can you imagine? There has to be a way for us to get in, just breaks in. Ask Gumshoe. Gumshoe's like, oh, sure, yeah, I'll take you over there. I have a key, actually. Yeah, easy there, pal, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pal. Detective Gumshoe. Aren't you supposed to be at a meeting? I'm, uh, just taking a breather. My, my feet hurt. Well, you've been standing? From s from sitting so long? No, actually, from serving everyone coffee. Damn. That made me their bitch. <laughs> Sounds like Gumshoe's still out of the loop. Say, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Oh, uh, where? Edgeworth? No, why would you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. Fuck. It's almost like the battles between you two in court. That sounds serious. 
Is it because of what my sister said? Yeah, probably. Oh. Yeah, that's basically what it all boils down to. <laughs> that falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. After the battle. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, even even Joe Dark's after him. Yeah. <laughs> his ghost has come out of the grave just to fucking spy them. <laughs> but why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. I mean, he, there's no way of knowing if he did know that or if he did not know that. Yeah. Lona Sky was the guilty party in here, wasn't she? It makes it still makes him an accomplice. Regardless, the prosecutor is responsible for the evidence they present in court. Yeah. yeah. Not only that. But as you know, there have been a lot of rumors going around about Mr. Edgeworth. His amazing talent as a prosecutor has kept him safe from those who don't like him. You know what's funny about that? As he was like talking like that, it sounded like he was also like uh, like speaking Gumshoe's lines because <laughs> he also was like his mouth was open. <laughs> yeah. But now with this, are there really so many people who hate him? Um, I'm pretty sure there's a lot more people that love him. In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth not only has that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know of for making enemies. Hey, Dick, keep up the good work. How the fuck do you say to me? <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Let's go out for lunch again sometime. My treat. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, take me back to that joint sometime, okay, Dick? Oh, yes, sir. Seems you don't have any problems with enemies. No, because I don't have talent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm, uh, I'm careful not to stick out. Anyway, I'm uh, a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edward just might crack. Actually, I took a look at the file earlier while the coffee was brewing. He seems genuinely concerned over Edgeworth. Well, what did you find in? The only evidence Dark left behind was during his final attack. His final attack? You mean... When he killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl. You mean that one? <laughs> Me. Seems Detective Gumshoe never realized Emma was the girl. That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Well, what was it? Oh, uh, let's see. I think it had something to do with uh, the murder weapon. Oh, I forget. Look, it's all written somewhere in here, okay? <laughs> His powers of recollection <laughs> never fail to impress. Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. It might jog his memory. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have, 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 have a knife. It's yeah, have, have a screwdriver. What the fuck is it? Evidence of the past case. Brought back to his office by Gant's request. What if the screwdriver was the weapon that he was using all along? Anyway. It has a different number on it. Yeah. I'm about this. Uh, hey, is, is that... Why the fuck are you carrying around a murder weapon? <laughs> what if he just draws his gun and he's like, Put that knife down! <laughs> it's a, it has a tag attached to it that labels SL9 incident on it. I believe it would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of? What are you doing with that? I don't and know. Why are, you, why are you taking it out in the middle of the criminal affairs department? Why are you pointing it at me? <laughs> what, why are you stabbing me with it? <laughs> hey man, that's not cool. Ow, that shit hurt. <laughs> Ever since that case is closed, that knife's been locked away in a locker. On the day Detective Goodman was murdered, this suddenly disappeared from the locker. It was found in Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. D that's it. Now I remember what that incriminating piece of evidence was. Was it this? When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what is it, Detective? Quick, before you forget again. You gotta ask him about it. <laughs> This knife. It was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. He traced it back to the store he bought it at. Plus, it had his fingerprints on it, too. Awesome! But no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. When we take a good look at that knife, you'll see it's broken. You don't have to take a good look to notice that. <laughs> either. I mean, Yeah, well, anyway. <laughs> 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 
take a guess where the broken off t- tip of the knife was found. In my ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's what did him in. Where was it? The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it inside his own body. Wait, was it in him? So why did they need to forge evidence? It was found deep inside the stab wound. Did it match Dr- Dark's knife? You bet. Down to the last fiber. That's pretty conclusive. What if, um, what if Lana was the one that pointed to that? Like, stabbed him and, like, broke it off. <sighs> Shit. Sounds in the back. Sound in the back died from a punctured heart and lung. A knife tip was in the wound. Broke tip was found in the victim's body, belonged to murderer Joan Dark. Alright, what about his crimes? Joe Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just your run of the mill businessman. A businessman? What made him take on serial killing? One day on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. With his car? So it was an accident? An accident, yes, but it transformed him into an animal. An animal? He killed a man that witnessed the accident. Then he killed a lady who saw the second crime. A kid walked by just then, so he killed him too. Then when he was burying bodies, a jogger came upon the scene and was killed as well. Finally, he turned himself in. So, he is a pretty careless animal. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence. So he turned himself in? Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. Prosecutor Marshall. That crime was witnessed by someone too, but luckily Dark was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. That last witness? It came Emma. <laughs> well, there you have it in a nutshell. That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money you need, you should ask Chief Gann. I, I don't got any. Yeah. It's not money, but it does concern the Chief. His office is the crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The Chief's out now, and his office is locked. But we'd like to have a look around, if that's okay. Well, any detective's ID card can unlock the door. Wait, we have... We have Detective Goodman's. <gasps> what? Really? But if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? Is that a real crime? Simply put, I'd be canned. Oh... Sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this ID card? It was a of goodness. <laughs> that won't work either. The data was deleted the day he died. Ma'am. Oh. So in other words, damn. <laughs> what happened to my voice? Clear your throat. So in other words, Gumshoe was our only chance of getting into that office. I wonder if there's something we could show him that would make him change his mind. Here's a picture of Edgeworth's nudes. All yours. If you swipe oh, the card. <laughs> I don't know. What, what would we show him? To make him like, be like, yeah, I'm convinced. No. 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 Oh, no. Oh. There you go. You don't have a clue, keep your trap shut. Sheesh. How about this jar? About that jar, I think I've seen it before somewhere. Somewhere? Or maybe it's one of those memories people have from previous lives. This must have been the most uninformative detective I've ever met. Something about it makes me feel uneasy. It's like I'm in the chief's office and he's yelling at me. Chief Gan? Where could I have seen that <gasps> before? Show, show him the fucking picture! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Couldn't we have just been like fucking like shoved it in his face? Uh, let's see here. Half written. Oh, a lost item report, huh? Very impressive, Detective. You knew what it was right off the bat. Yeah, I filled out several of these. Well, I am a master of misplacement, you know. 
The master has such a cool ring to it. The way I see it, if things are meant to be lost, then they're meant to be lost. There's a higher power work here. Oh, a higher power. Maybe I shouldn't let Emma hold any evidence. Oh, uh, shut it! Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Back to the battle! <laughs> Text says AI 16. What's that gotta do with anything? Nothing, apparently. At least that's what Edward said. Hmm, that makes it seem all the more suspicious. Who knows? This might turn out to be the clue that breaks the case. Yeah, it'd be really funny if it is. Wouldn't that be nice? What else can we show him? The ID card? That's the ID card record, isn't it? Yes, yeah, the only number we have left to investigate at 420. <laughs> He's smoke. The victim, Detective Goodman, must have entered the evidence room alongside with someone else. Someone with an exclusive officer number. Seven, 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 seven. That's one seven too many, detective. An exeminate officer. Hmm. I just might have a hunch. Uh, about this. Hey, is that? The attack. Oh wait, is this just repeating the shit? Yeah, looks like it. Now, now I remembered. Oh. <laughs> uh. This ID card belonged to the victim, Detective Bruce Goodman. You can do just about anything these days with a card and a secret number. Scary. It's only scary because you keep dropping your card, Detective Goodman. Sorry. Dumb shoe. <laughs> I forgot my secret number a lot, too. I'm scared of myself, but... But I'm me, after all. And what could be wrong with that? I think I'll stay out of this conversation. Do we not have what we need? Maybe. Hey, that's it! That's the King of Prosecutors Award that Mr. Edgeworth got the other day. Are you at the award ceremony, Detective Gumshoe? Of course, pal. I got an award for diligent... I, I, I think he said this before. Oh, congratulations. I was wondering, why is the award a shield? And why is it broken? Oh, there's a reason. Um, I'll tell you what it is later. Apparently, he forgot. Can we, can we check these files? Yeah, it's just A to check. Oh. I'm setting up on those files. There's nothing wrong with Mr. Edwards' presentation. I think people are accusing him of injustice. I offer one ain't buying it, pal. You're looking into the case for Mr. Edgeworth? Yeah, it was a pretty big deal while it was going on, you know. After all, serial killer was on the loose. But Lana was pretty clear in her confession. She forged evidence in order to prove Joe Dark's guilt. Yeah, first I had to check it. Alright, case close. Victims. Jeb Bates. Jeb Baby. Head prosecutor, Miles Edgeworth. He doesn't say Detective Gumshoe on here. He, I don't think he was a detective yet. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe he wasn't uh, like high uh, up on there. And then we can talk to him about. Maybe we need to move around? Maybe we're missing something. How, can we go up to. <laughs> yeah, go see Edgeworth! <laughs> Make yourselves feel better! Wait, are we really at 57 minutes? Yeah. Fuck! <laughs> Do you want to leave it off here before we talk to Edgeworth? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't know right. the time. <laughs> well, we'll figure out what we need and talk to Edgeworth about, about some things. Uh, in the next one, uh, we got to we got to figure out that might be something fishy going on with the executives in, in this department. And I ain't talking about salmon. Yeah. I ain't talking about anchovies. I'm talking about trout. <laughs> the PhD in the soil is too high. I fear I might die. Have you seen all the memes about like uh like, But trout's dying? No, it's 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 like how will this affect the trout population? It's like it's like how will LeBron's legacy affect the <laughs> trout population? No, I think it is a trout. Like you see people like releasing it and like you have to be like 
careful with it and it like swims and it just goes and just like falls over whereas people with that do like uh, bass fishing they just chuck it into the fucking water <laughs> yeah if you fucking bass don't care you can, you can just chuck them back in yeah or trout you guys be really precise or else it just kills them immediately <laughs> yeah but uh anyways that was that was a little side tangent but Thank you all for watching, and in the next one, we'll continue off with our investigation. Might start the trial. I don't know how much more investigating we gotta do. I don't know either. We still gotta look at his office. Yeah, we got. We still got a lot of stuff to do. Uh, but yeah, till next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye. -bye.